Hi, I'm Dr. George Joshua, and this is a continuation of our previous discussion on labiaplasties with our round table. And uh, here we're going to be talking about labia majora reduction. So Marissa is going to start us off with the first question. Uh, so Kristen, how does a woman know if she needs a labia majora reduction or a labia minora? So um, this kind of goes down to getting a better idea of the labial anatomy. Um, the labia majora are the outer labia, or um, kind of what you would see if you were to look down at the vagina. The labia minora are the inner labia, <clears throat> and it's sometimes, you know, we have this conversation with patients regularly, and they think they have labia majora problems when it's actually labia minora, because the labia minora are so long, they hang outside, and so they consider those the labia that are outside. But the thinner um, labia that kind of um, droop or kind of dangle in the vagina are the labia minora. Um, and, and this is kind of how we you know, talk to patients about, well, which, which is the problem for you, which is the most bothersome? And sometimes it's both, and sometimes it's one versus the other. Okay, so Sarah, what are some common complaints women who have enlarged labia majora have? Yeah, so similar to labia minora, sometimes it's size, appearance, discomfort with tight clothing, bathing suits, um, and then also women who have experienced significant weight loss or um, with age as estrogen decreases and the fat kind of decreases there, the skin itself can droop and sag. So with the majora reduction, the excess drooping skin is removed um, and any underlying fat that needs to be taken out is removed as well. And Dr. Tasha, what are some common reasons that you see in patients who are getting the labia majora reduction done? So I think the biggest thing with the labia majora is just protrusion of the outer labia, outer lips, especially as pressure is put on that area. Um, in a lot of patients, it's the skin and the fatty tissue. And in some other patients, like Sarah mentioned, it's just the skin. Um, so it's more of that bulging appearance it does cause some discomfort, but I would say in this procedure, I would say when it comes to labia majora, it's more of a cosmetic issue. And um, the one thing we also see is in some patients where the pelvic floor is dropped, the labia majora drops, and you can't just remove. And in those patients, we explain that the treatment is not removing the labia majora; it's fixing the pelvic floor or elevating. The Kristen, so how common are labia majora reductions compared to labia minora? Um, labia minora reductions um, typically tend to be um, a higher volume for our practice. Um, I would say on average we do about 10 labiaplasties for every one labia majora. Um, there are particular reasons for this. Um, number one being is labia minora reductions are typically um, a functional um, issue in that um, with activity, exercising, clothing, um, the labia minora either chafe, rub, or just very uncomfortable for patients, whereas from a labia majora reduction, it's more of a cosmetic component. Most patients do not typically um, complain of discomfort related to the majora um, and therefore um, are less likely to kind of have that surgery. Um, however, there are some women who is bothersome um, just physic, um, visually when they wear clothing um, or when they look at themselves um, and then those patients is um, kind of prime candidates for that procedure.